What is up everyone? Welcome to the show. My name is John Moore and in today's video I want to share with you guys what I think is the easiest way to learn all of the major chords on the banjo. We're going to be able to do this by only memorizing three hand positions. It's only three hand positions. We're going to have to build into muscle memory and just a little bit of a, just a basic understanding of Western music theory and the musical scale, the Western musical scale. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll get right into it. So here's a quick little crash course in Western music scales. Now, when I refer to the Western music scale, we're not talking about Western music, giddy up cowboy. We're talking about everything from Mozart to Taylor Swift. This is just the standard, what we would consider European music. Okay, so we're going to have, in the Western scale, we're going to have 12 total notes, and we're going to have seven major notes in that. So it's going to be seven notes that, are part, that have a letter assigned to them. So we're, it's going to go... A through G, there's seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? And after we get to G, it starts over again. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And as we go up that scale, it gets higher pitched. Now, in between those seven notes, in between those seven notes on the scale, there are going to be sharps, and with the exception of B and E. So it would go something like this. It goes A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. And then we start back over again at A. So if we count those, there's 12 notes total in the scale. And if we come up, in this case, a banjo is open G. If we come up 12 frets, 12 notes, we'll land back. We'll come full circle back again at G. And once again, we're back at a G chord. Now how we can use this whenever we're doing our chords is say if we're going to catch a G chord, and I'll show you guys these basic hand positions in a second. If we're going to catch a G chord, and I know I need to go to a C, then I'll count up to a C. So we'll go G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. There's our C chord. Alright, so we can do that with any position. And there's going to be three positions. We're going to be doing learning what's called our root position. It's going to be our inverted, our first inversion, and then our second inversion positions. So the first hand position I'm going to show you guys is what we call the root hand position. And here's what it looks and sounds like. Now this is going to be the more commonly used position of the three different positions on the banjo. So you'll want to get very familiar with this. Now how we catch this is we're going to take our ring finger and we're going to fret the fourth string on the fifth fret. We're going to take our middle finger and fret the third string on the fourth fret. We're going to take our pointer finger and fret the second string on the third fret. We're going to take our pinky and we're going to fret the first string on the fifth fret. So it should go like this. And this is a G root chord. Okay, now we call this a root chord because the lowest note in the chord, the root note, is the uh, is the note for which the chord is named after. So in this case, that is a G. And the note order of this chord is going to be from the fourth string down to the first. So four, three, two, one. It's going to be G, B, D, G. So you'll notice our lowest note is a G. So we call that a G root note, or G root chord. For the first inversion position, we're going to take our ring finger and we're going to fret the fourth string on the ninth fret. We're going to take our pointer finger and fret the third string on the seventh fret. Our middle finger is going to get the second string on the eighth fret. And our pinky is going to get the first string on the ninth fret. And it sounds like this. Now you'll notice from our root position, they sound fairly similar. That's because both of these are G chords. The reason this is called the first inversion is because the notes have now become inverted. So if we actually count up and figure out what all the notes are of this root G chord, they're going to be G, B, D, G. So everything that we've done on this chord, when we come up to our first inversion, they're all scooted up one string. All the notes go up one, one step. So now it's going to be B, D, G, B. So that's our first inversion. It's still a G chord. So the next hand position after the first inversion is what we call the second inversion. And on the banjo, that's simply a bar chord barred across the first through fourth strings at the twelfth fret for a G chord in this case. 
So you can use your ring finger, you can use your middle finger, your pointer finger. I like to use my ring finger, but you just bar it across the 12th fret in this case. Now every chord that I've showed you so far, every position I've showed you, and the frets associated with it have been for a G chord. So now that we know the G chord, we can take this hand position and we can move it anywhere else on the neck and get different chords. So in the case of the root chord, this is a G. If I wanted to take this and catch, say, an A, well, I know that it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and there's a sharp after G, so it goes G, G sharp, A. So we simply count up. G, G sharp, A. If I wanted to catch a C, well, now we're going to run across the B, which doesn't have a sharp on it. So we're going to go G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. So there's our C. And we can do the same thing from these other positions. Our first inversion G, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. And likewise from this position, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Now one other thing you may have noticed is that the banjo is tuned to open G. And this is essentially an open chord. So we can do the same thing here. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. And we can do this for any chord. If we want to find a, find a D, we go on up from our C to a C sharp to a D. And you can use this to find every single major chord on the banjo by simply counting up from any of these three hand positions. The root, first inversion, and second inversion. Now after our second inversion, things just kind of start over, so we end up going back to our root position, but 12 frets higher. So what that would look like is something like this. We start off with our root, our first inversion, our second inversion, and as I mentioned earlier, everything starts over after 12 frets. That's our 12 note musical scale. We're back at a root position right there. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave it a like down below if you found it helpful and learned anything from it. And subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this from me in the future. If you want to help me bring these videos to you guys more frequently, then you can feel free to support me by following the link down in the description below to Patreon. I've got a page set up over there, over there where you can help feed a banjo player. Well anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Later.